Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. We're going to be talking about uh, some of the needs that we have in life in order to feel happy and fulfilled, passionate about life, excited about life, and uh, this is such an interesting topic. I hope that it's beneficial to you and encourages you no matter what your Enneagram type is. Um, it may be a little bit that based on your Enneagram type, some of these needs feel more important to you. But at the end of the day, all of us have all six of these needs. Now this list isn't original with me. Uh, a long time ago, I heard it in one of Tony Robbins' um, uh, audio um, files and I thought it was just really fascinating. It's one of those things that's just stayed with me over the years. And um, you know, whenever I have a chance to work with students uh, or interact with young people, a lot of times this list comes up and we talk about it. So before we get started, uh, just a reminder in the description below is a link to my website, tomlahue.com. I do offer Enneagram life coaching and relationship coaching. Are you feeling stuck in your marriage in an endless cycle of arguments? The love is still there, but the connection seems lost and you're wondering how the two of you could have drifted so far apart. Are you no longer waking up to go to your job with passion and excitement and you're wondering what your purpose is and why you're here? You know, the Enneagram is a great tool to help us know more about ourselves and to help us relate to the people that we love. I would love for you to consider signing up for my three-month coaching program, Present to Life. It's a program designed uniquely around you and your Enneagram type to help you regain your passion for life, and to restore and renew your relationships. Please consider going to my website, tomlehue.com. Check out my program. I'd love to hear from you today, and I'd love to start working with you as soon as possible. Also, I have a lot of on-demand classes as well on many different topics, many related to the Enneagram, and um, you know, lots of opportunities to continue to grow. So let's, let's jump into this information, and let's just talk about it, okay? So uh, like I said, I came across this list uh, a few years back and I've it stayed with me. I continue to think about it and I continue to see it, uh, you know, in in action and in practical ways in my own life. And what's interesting is these needs um, sometimes feel a little bit like opposites uh, sometimes um, or complement each other. Um, but I think you'll find that it rings true that we all have all six of these needs. The first need that we have is the need for safety or security. Uh, we want to feel safe in life. Uh, imagine if you were living in a, in a uh, jungle. Like imagine that your plane went down or your boat uh, crashed on a little island and there's three or four of you that have to survive. Uh, immediately, you know, your safety needs would come front and center. So first of all, think like food, water, shelter, clothing, um, you know, a warm place to, to sleep, to get away from the elements, to be protected from all of the animals and the predators out there in the jungle that want to kill you. And so those safety needs are, are you know, probably the most primal and the ones we feel the most when, when things uh, are not going well. Like we may feel like uh, we need to earn money in order to pay our taxes, in order to pay our rent, in order to pay for our car. And when there's not enough finances, uh, or we feel like somebody's out to get us, somebody wants to you know, remove us from our jobs, or uh, somebody is trying to hurt us or intimidate us in some way, we feel unsafe. It could be even the political climate that we live in, uh, or the health crisis, whatever that is at the time. Um, if you're facing financial crisis or health crisis or relationship crisis, um, maybe you don't feel safe, or you're growing up in a home that doesn't feel safe. Maybe your parents were neglectful or are neglectful or, um, or you know, are abusive or oppressive in some way. And so those needs for safety and security, we're going to list those first. And then what's interesting is the second need that we have, it's almost kind of, uh, you know, opposite of that need or companion to that need, is the need for excitement or adventure or for novelty, or you might say for exploration or fun. We all have this need within us for something to be exciting. You know, imagine that, again, you're back on that island and it's been three days, you're, you found a cave, you've got a fire, somebody killed a wild boar, you're roasting the pig, you're eating, um, everything is okay. You feel safe, you feel like you're protected from the elements, like you're gonna be okay. At some point sitting around that fire, you're gonna say, why don't we go exploring? Like, I think I saw a lagoon over there. Let's go get in the water. Let's go see what the other side of this island is like. Just sitting here 
um, you know, sitting around a fire, being safe, isn't all that exciting. And so this need for adventure, this need to experience something new, to travel, to, uh, to see uh, new places, to meet new people, to understand new customs, this is a very strong need that we all have within us. And think about like a movie, for example. A great movie really meets both of these needs. You know, we're sitting safe in a movie theater. You know, we're not under any threat. Uh, we're sitting in our, our living room on our couch under a blanket eating Pop-Tarts and there's, there's, there's no real threat to us. And so we live vicariously through the movie and the actors in that movie on some great adventure, whether that's Harry Potter or Indiana Jones or Star Wars or Predator or whatever it is that you're watching. You're, you can even get scared and have an emotional response a jump scare from that movie when you're not in any real danger. You're sitting comfortably in the protection of your own home, but you're able to sort of transport yourself out of that safe environment and go along with that actor on that, on that adventure. And a great movie meets both of those needs. In fact, when the movie doesn't meet the need for excitement and for adventure and novelty, what happens? You turn it off. You say, this isn't, this isn't interesting. This is, this is boring. It's not meeting a need, and so you, even though you're safe, that's not enough. You turn it off. Or think about a great thrill ride, a roller coaster, for example. It meets both needs. Hopefully it's safe. It's, you know, they have inspections and inspectors that come out and test it. You got a harness that goes over your neck, and you're secure, locked in, and safe. But the whole point of the ride is that it is exciting, and it gets you out of your norm. It, it gets you to experience uh, new adventures and thrills. And when both of these come together, you're going to feel very satisfied, very fulfilled, and very content with life. Now, the next two needs are also like the first two. They, they complement each other or they contrast. They seemingly contrast each other. The number three need, the third need we have, is the need uh, to belong or to feel like we're fitting in. Uh, to connect to a group of people and to feel like we're a part of that group. To feel like... You know, we're a member of that group and people know us, they understand us, they appreciate us, they care about us, and we feel some kind of affection or fondness or connection to that group. Um, now, this could happen at work, this could happen in school, this could happen in, uh, you know, congregations, churches, synagogues, mosques, this could happen in lots of different ways. It could happen in you know, hobbies or clubs or bowling leagues or lots of different ways that you could you know, expose yourself to other people. Uh, that didn't, I didn't say that. That didn't sound right when I said that. Expose yourself to groups of other people where you can find that connection and feel like, you know, you have a group of people, a tribe that you belong to where people know you, love you, and care about you. Obviously, it would be great if this happened in our own families. You know, there was a time when everybody stayed in one area and we all had this connection with each other and, uh, you know, relatives and cousins and uncles and aunts and we felt very secure you know, and locked into that, to that region or locked into that culture through our family and through our small towns and our connection to kin. Well, a lot of that is eroded in our society, but that doesn't mean that need is, is no longer there for us. All of us have this need to belong, to feel like we're a part of something bigger than ourselves, and to feel like people in this group love us, care about us, and understand us. Okay, and you know, if you don't have that in your life, um, you know, it can be, it can be devastating. I was just talking to a group of teenagers last week or th yesterday. And that's, that's what brought this up to my mind because we were talking about all this. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of taken aback as one of the, one of the young people, one of the teenagers said in that group, I don't have any friends. And she's sitting among all of her peers. And she just said, I don't have any friends. Um, sometimes I just, you know, sit in my bedroom and look up at the ceiling and it's just me and, you know, the animals on our little farm and that's it. She's like, I, I, just, I just don't know how to make friends. And I felt so sorry for this kid because she's literally sitting among all these other teenagers and they all just kind of looked at her like, you know, too bad for you. And they could have easily reached out to her and they could have said, you know, hey, Sarah, where are your friends? But they didn't take the opportunity. And it's so sad when, when you try to go through life, you're not sure how to make friends. You're not sure like how to reach out to other people. And I know this can be particularly difficult for some of us. It's, it's just like we didn't come preloaded with the software to know how to make these kinds of connections. Now, some Enneagram types seem like it's, you know, much easier for them and other Enneagram types often struggle feeling like outsiders, feeling like they don't belong. 
And that, that can be a real challenge. The, set, the, the next need, number four in this list, that contrasts the need to belong is the need to stand out, the need to feel significant, the need, need to feel like you're not one of the group, like you're somehow different in some way. At some point, you know, if you were a part of a group and you felt like you belonged and you had all this, you know, you know people around you that loved you and cared about you and accepted you for who you are, there may be a point in time where you're sitting in this thinking, yeah, but how am I different? You know, what, what's unique about me? What's special about me? What, what, what makes me stand out? What am I good at? And you may look for ways to excel, like uh, through sports or through education or music or art or something like that. And, you know, you may become known as the guitar person or the piano person or the person that, uh, you know, excels at basketball or loves track or something. But there's other ways to stand out. It could be by the way you dress or the style of music that you listen to or your interests and hobbies. Uh, but all of us have this need to know that we're different than others and what it, and to want to know what is it we're into? What is it we're good at? Somebody will ask you, hey, Tom, what is it you're into? And you're supposed to have an answer to that that's bigger than television and video games. You know, I'm into my iPad. I'm into TikTok. I'm into watching Instagram reels. You know, you want to have some kind of answer that's bigger than that, that's beyond that, uh, that, that sort of identifies you as separate than other people. Well, I like swimming. Well, I love diving. Or I'm into weightlifting. You know, what is the magazine on your coffee table? You walk in, there's a magazine on your coffee table. What is it? Is it surfing? Is it skating? Is it computers and tech? Is it uh, hunting and fishing? Is it, um, you know, finance? What is that magazine that, that identifies you uh, by your hobbies and interests and how you are unique and stand out? So all of us have this need to, to set ourselves apart and to feel like we're unique and different and special. Now, there's two more needs, and we're gonna to get to those in just a minute. And the interesting thing is, if you had all of these first four, you're gonna feel very happy, content, and fulfilled for a while. But the next two needs, a lot of people don't realize the next two needs, and, and they're kind of wondering, like, I've got all this stuff, I mean, I have all my needs met, I've got great finances, I've got a great job, I feel like I'm a part of a group, I have good friends, I have an important job, yet I still feel like something's missing. And it's because the next two things we're gonna talk about are just as important, but sometimes are not as obvious and often come later in life as we start to realize that I have all of this and yet I still feel some, something's missing in life. Now, if you're looking for a book in the Bible that really just you know uh, explains all of this, look at the book of Ecclesiastes by, by, uh, uh, by, the, uh, by King Solomon. Look at that book, read through it, and you'll see that Solomon, in many ways, is talking about exactly what we're talking about right now, and that's, you know, thousands of years ago. Uh, but he, of course, was the wisest man in the world. He knew this before T Tony Robbins or anybody else understood this. Now, you know, those last two that we talked about, let's go back to those for a minute, the need to belong and the need to, become, and the need to stand out. You know, the organization that comes to my mind, or the metaphor that comes to my mind that really illustrates both of those needs simultaneously, think about something like the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. Think about an organization like that. Now, I don't know, maybe you love the Scouts or maybe you don't love the Scouts. Maybe you were involved in it and hated it or involved in it and loved it. Whatever, I don't know what your opinion is. I was never involved in Scouts. Um, I wanted to be as a kid. I thought it was cool because I, I thought the uniforms were cool. You know, I'm a seven and it's hard for me to, you know, sometimes see past those surface things. But I was never involved in Scouts. But, you know, in my mind, I have this image or idea of what Scouts is like. And playing on that idea, you know, uh, as simple as that idea may be to me, um, think about how an organization like that seeks to meet both of the need to belong and the need to stand out. You know, here you come into this, to this group. Imagine you walk in your first time to a scout meeting, boys or girls. Uh, you walk into a scout meeting and you see all these other kids who are like you, but they're all wearing the same uniform. And on that uniform, there's this little badge that says, Troop 141, you know, and then the name of your hometown, uh, whatever it is, Memphis, Tennessee, Jackson, Mississippi, 
uh, Troop 175, St. Louis, Missouri, or whatever the county is, what, however they do it. They've all got this same number, the same badge. Look, they're all identifying in this group together, and they're doing all these exciting things. Look how it meets the other need. They're doing all these exciting things. They're going on canoe trips. They're going on camping trips. They're learning how to, you know, to whittle and 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 forage and you know all these interesting things to a boy or to a girl. And you could be a part of this. You come in in your uh, shorts and t-shirt, and they're all wearing this cool uniform that's designed and they all look like a team and they're all interacting together positively and they're doing these interesting things and you think I want to become I want to be a part of this I want to be a part of this I want the flag and the the number and the my hometown I want I want to be a part of this and then notice that next thing you'll notice is they all have differing badges that signify what they've accomplished it shows each other how they stand out look at me I earned the badge for how to make a, build a campfire. Look at me. I earned a badge on, on how to um, make candles or whatever the, you know, the, the, um, to tie a tourniquet, to dress a wound. And you see that there's some kids who have two or three or four badges, and then there's other kids who have 50. And obviously those kids with 50, they've been in it longer, and they stand out, and there's, there's this immediate you know, line of how to, um, how to find significance within this group. Work hard, earn these badges, and then everybody will see, and you'll stand out as somebody, and then one day, maybe you'll become an Eagle Scout. The same thing with martial arts. You start out as a white belt, and then a yellow belt, and then, you know, there's this, there's this line of growth and development, and you can easily see how people have gained prominence and significance within that organization. I want to belong. I want the uniform. I want to stand out. I want the next rank of belt. I want to go to blue belt and then brown belt, red belt, black belt, whatever. You get the idea. How organizations, in a sense, play on these needs that we have in order to give you a clear path of what progress looks like. Okay, so interesting. This kind of stuff is so interesting. You might ask yourself, like, how do these needs, um, how have I let them, or how have they guided some of the decisions I've made in life? Yeah, you know, I can see kids maybe signing up to play sports because they want to be friends with the kids on the team and they don't even really like, they don't even really like basketball. They don't like playing baseball, but they want to be a part of that social group of other kids, you know, that maybe stand out and have popularity that are cheerleaders or are, you know, um, involved in sports. And so they may not really be interested in actually learning how to play the sport or engaging in the sport, but they want the social group around them. And probably the worst example of this is think like inner city gangs, right? Um, you know, where you can belong if you commit a crime and show that you're loyal to our group. And, um, you know, you may not feel safe if you're not a part of a gang. And so in order to meet the need for safety and to belong, you know, you might find yourself aligning yourself with people who really don't have your best interest at heart. And that's probably the most extreme example. Cults would be another extreme example of, of this kind of thing. All right, let me take a drink. Okay, let's talk about the last two. Now, these two, some of you are going to hear these last two and you're going to be like, of course, that's so simple. Like, I knew that all my life. And other people are, oh, realize, okay, before we move on, let me go back just a minute and say, everybody you meet with the first two and the second two, they're kind of like on, think of it like a, um, um, like a, not a trajectory. Think of it like everybody's on a continuum. Some people, and some Enneagram types, for example, some people are much more interested in safety than they are in excitement. While other people and other Enneagram types are much more interested in excitement than they are in safety and security. Um, but you know, nobody jumps out of a plane without a parachute. So even those who love excitement still value safety. Um, and then some people are much more interested in belonging and feeling connected and feeling like they're a part of the group while other types are much more interested in standing out and feeling significant. So think for example, like I think of sixes and twos and nines really wanting to be a part of a group where threes and fours and maybe sevens and fives are much more interested in standing out in some way. 
maybe for their information or knowledge or for their skills or abilities or for their, you know, their unique uh, personality or their hilarity. Okay, but I think you can do that with all the Enneagram types and show that people value both and some people value one more than the other, but we all value all four of those. Okay, here's the next two. Number five is the need to continue growing. The need to continue growing, learning, developing, um, you know, enhancing our skills, um, taking classes, um, signing up to, um, you know, for new seminars or workshops, the need to continue feeding your mind, to turn off Seinfeld and Frasier and Modern Family and turn on documentaries, to learn a foreign language, um, to learn a new hobby or interest. And you know what's interesting is like a lot of times you see this with older people. Um, they, they've, 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 they've done their work their whole life and now they've reached this retirement age and they're kind of saying, what do I do now? And so they'll take up gardening and they'll learn to garden. They'll take up yoga and they'll learn yoga or they'll take up uh, Tai Chi or they'll take up uh, art, ceramics, um, you know, painting classes, um, uh, theological classes, whatever, whatever is interest to them. It really doesn't matter. And see, this is so interesting. It really doesn't matter what your interest or or passion or hobby is, what matters is, is that you have a sense that you're continuing to grow and gain new information, gain new skills, learning how to play an instrument, learning how to play a piano, it's something you've always wanted to do all of your life and now you've got the time and you're engaging in this new activity and stimulating new neurons in your brain and you feel much more alive. And what's interesting is like among the older people that continue to grow, and continue to learn new skills and continue to play new games, they tend to be the most happy of, of the older people. I mean, think about the old curmudgeon that's sitting there all day watching Judge Judy, watching, you know, the news, and just going from one buffet to the next, you know, one frozen yogurt place to the next. Not very happy, you know, upset when kids are playing on their yard. But as we get older, as we continue to grow and we continue to learn new skills, we continue to learn and take in new information and new ways of seeing things, it tends to keep us younger. And it is a need that we all have. And I can't tell you how many people that, you know, they get done with school, they get done with, with college, and they never read another book. They never read another book. They never listen to a podcast. They never take in new information. And it's so sad. I remember talking to a preacher 30 years ago, 30 years ago, who was my age then. And he was basically just kind of filling in. He wasn't really motivated in any way and he was just kind of occupying a church as their preacher and I had a I got to spend a week you know interacting with him and he was just you know not very active and um actually I got to spend more than that it was, it was a couple of weeks I spent there um and I, I'll never forget what he said to me it's been 30 years ago 30 years ago it just blew my mind I couldn't even imagine it he said Tom you know I don't think I've read a book since I graduated college he had a bookshelf filled with old books from college and I was asking him about his books and he said, I don't think I've read a book since a book, a book since I graduated 30 years ago from college. I'm like, this guy is not feeding himself. How can he feed anybody else? He's not growing himself. He's not learning himself. How could he possibly be instructing or challenging or encouraging anyone else? Well, he can't be. Because he's not growing, you can't help other people grow. How could you help people do something you're not willing to do yourself? So sad. Okay, I don't want to beat you up if you haven't read a book. I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just saying, hey, you still have a lot of life in front of you. I know it can feel a little bit overwhelming sometimes if, if you, you know, pick up a great big book and try to read it. Well, don't pick up a big one. Pick up something, you know, small and easy and something you're interested in. And fiction, by the way, is not for everybody. Some people love fiction, you know, they live on it. And then others of us, we get lost in all the names and characters and, and it, it's okay. Okay. That's what movies are for. All right. So let's talk about the last of the six needs. So what have we talked about so far? Safety and security. Number two. Uh, the need for excitement and adventure and exploration. Number th number three, the need to belong and to feel connected and like we're a part of the group. Number four, the need to stand out and feel significant and like there's something about us that's unique and important. And number five, 
the need to keep growing and keep learning and keep developing. And then finally, number six, when you hear this, some of you guys are gonna be like, yes, of course, I've known this all my life. I do this every day. And then there's gonna be others of you that are challenged and think, yeah, I'm not very good at that. Mm, there's something within me that just doesn't care about that so much. But I know I should. And then the last of the six needs is the need to give back. The need to pay it forward. The need to take what has been invested in you and then share that with others and in some way make the lives of other people better. Whether that's through teaching and instruction, whether that's through caregiving and nurturing, whether that's through encouraging leadership, uh, whatever it is, there's this need within all of us to see our life make a difference for someone else. To share what we have, to share what we've learned, to share our resources with other people and to see that other people are benefiting, benefiting from our existence. Think about like these, these people, these celebrities that make millions and millions of dollars, right? They have everything that you could ever want. They have safety and security. They have uh, significance and uh, you know they, they stand out. They've got uh, belonging. They've got, um, you know, they, they've got everything you could ever want, right? And then what do they do? They go off and start a charitable foundation. They go off and they start, you know, orphanages or save the environment or whatever it is that they're passionate about or whatever it is that they think, you know, they can invest their time, energy, talents and resources and money in. They end up trying to give back. They become philanthropists. You know, they build railroads, they build oil refineries. And then what do they do? Then they start schools and orphanages and hospitals. And why? Because they realize that all of this that I have isn't completely satisfying if I don't give back in some way. If I don't benefit the lives of other people or the less fortunate or whatever you want to call it, uh, if I don't give back in some way. Now, what's interesting about this list is if we don't have all of these, we're going to feel like something's missing. If all of these needs are not met in some way in our life, we're going to feel like something's off or something's missing. And what's cool is you can start working on all these needs right now. You don't have to be a millionaire in order to give back to other people. You don't. You could give back right now. And you'll never be more happy and joyful than when you're focused on making someone else's life better. You'll never have more peace and more harmony and more excitement and more love in your own heart than when you're giving away peace, harmony, love, and excitement to other people. If you just look for those on the sidelines, look for those who are outcasts, look for those that are marginalized, and if you'll give some kind of attention, some kind of encouragement, some kind of help in whatever area or whatever way that you can in your world, watch yourself how you feel. And you're not doing it primarily for yourself, but just notice it's a side benefit that there's something within you that says, that felt really good. I lost myself I lost all of this heavy thinking. I lost all of this worry, all of this anxiety, all of this, how am I doing? I lost all of that when I was focused on them and, and making their life better. Now, let me tell you something I did in my class yesterday that was funny uh, when I was working with, with uh, high schoolers. Let me tell you something I did. Uh, there, there's this big room full of high school kids, right? And right next to me was a very quiet, introverted, doesn't say anything kid and let's just call him Sam. Okay, so Sam is sitting next to me, and I don't know, he's, I, don't, I haven't been able to really get to the Enneagram with these kids yet, but he's probably a five, he's probably a four, maybe he's a nine, I don't know, he's one of the withdrawn types, and he's just, okay, so this is something I did. I said, all right guys, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a exercise to show you uh, and to prove to you that, this, that we all have this need to give back. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna count to three, and when I count to three, in unison, we're all going to say, look at Sam and say, yay, Sam! Yay, Sam! Okay, so I went one, two, and all the kids were like, what, what? This is weird. Why are we doing this? This is awkward. Oh, wow. Oh, this is ridiculous. So I went one, two, three, and they all went, half of them went, yay, Sam! And Sam just kind of sat there like, why are we doing this? I don't want people looking at me, you know? And I said, uh, 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 we got to have 100% participation. And when we get 100% participation, then we'll move on to the next level. So one, two, three, the whole class, they went, yay, Sam. 
And again, I could just see him cringe, right? And then I say, okay, the next level is I'm going to count one, two, three, and we're going to clap and say, yay, Sam. So one, two, three, everybody clapped, everybody joined in, everybody smiled and was laughing, and Sam was like, you know, dying inside. You could see he was just feeling very awkward and very on the spot. And everybody clapped and said, yay, Sam. And then I said, all right, final round. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to count three. You're going to stand up, clap as hard as you can, and point and say, yay, Sam. So they all did it. One, two, three. Everybody stood up. Everybody was laughing. Everybody was smiling. Sam was, you know, feeling like maybe the worst moment in his life. Okay. Now, when they were all done and everybody quit laughing, everybody quit giggling, everybody quit talking, I turned to Sam and said, how did that make you feel? And he's like, uh, he's so awkward. He didn't even want to say that he felt awful, you know, but obviously he felt awkward and put on the spot and uncomfortable. But then I asked the rest of the class, how did that make you feel? Well, you could tell it was so obvious. Everybody in that room and a lot of them were introverts. Believe me, everybody in that room was laughing and giggling and smiling. And that was my point is look, you guys as a group decided to give something to this person and notice it really didn't make him feel great, but it made you feel fantastic. Every one of you felt fantastic as you got the attention off of yourself and on someone else. Your lives were blessed. Your heart was filled. You were filled with joy in that moment while you were what? Giving something to another person. Think about that. All of us have the need to give back. All of us have the need to bless other people. All of us have the need to share our goodness and our encouragement with other people. And what's amazing is when we do that willingly, and you can do it right now, you can do it today with the people that you live with. Yeah, but yeah, but Tom, you don't know these people. They don't deserve it. I know. That's why we need God's grace. That's why we need his mercy because none of us deserve it. You can start giving that and what a great joyful feeling you'll have as a byproduct. Thank you guys. I hope this video is helpful to you. I hope it's encouraging to you. Six things we all need. We can start working on these today. We can let these impact our lives and our actions and our thoughts today. And let's go out there and let's bless other people today. And uh, thanks for joining me. And as always, be present to life and I'll see you next time.